right. Beautiful, isn't it? A little bit windy, I hope the audio is not too bad. It is also the shortest day of the year, or the longest night. So about 3 p.m. and I'm already a little bit in a hurry here in the Austrian Alps. It's called the, the salt district, or like the salt area of Austria. Salt mining has been going on here for about 7,000 years and uh, it's a beautiful area. I got into, back into archery a few years ago and I want to share a couple things with you. So I hope you're interested um, and this is fun to watch for you. Get a coffee, sit down and enjoy. There we are. Hey folks, um, welcome to another episode in the Woodman's Finest Modern Triad Archery Series. I don't want to give you the long spiel, I can only say that I used to be a split finger uh, longbow shooter here in Austria. Um, made my own cedar arrows and I loved my, my real turkey feathers of course. And eventually, like you're gonna hear me say in some other episodes, I nearly gave it up, I nearly hung up the bow forever and um, then I found the push, Joel Turner, Tom Clum Sr. and the whole what I call the modern trads, um, modern trad movement. That's why I call the series that. A few years back I um, started to get really into what I call modern trad and it, it saved archery for me because now I have a method, I know what to work on when things are not going well and the story is that it saved archery for me. What we're doing today is we're talking quickly about a little modifications that I've done to some of my feathers or veins. Originally the thing that I loved most about archery I think was making my own equipment. I loved the shooting as well but as, as I said it was source for quite a lot of frustration for me but making the equipment making my own cedar arrows and painting them and you know cutting or stamping my own feathers was really the reenactment and the connection to um, my hunter gatherer genes so to say and here being in Austria very close to Hungary and partially Hungarian as well it was all very fascinating the, um, all the different components of European archery and North American of course and me orienting myself more towards the North American market with all of the cutting-edge technology courses etc etc eventually saved archery for me it's a different story but it's also not um, if I kept to myself and wouldn't have never learned English started traveling and orienting um, oriented myself towards North American style of archery I would probably not do it anymore or would still shoot split finger thinking that I'm cheating as soon as I shoot three under. Different story. Anyway, so what I'm holding in my hand here is um, the arrows that I'm building right now. I'm really happy with, with these. There are some power flights, Easton, um, very heavy tips, etc, etc. A rather high-ish FOC arrow and a bunch of turkey feathers that I just found. They were five and a half inches long. That's what I used to shoot, you can imagine. Turkey feathers. Bar barred, bared, barred. Turkey feathers, striped. Something that we all, I think, find extremely beautiful and I hope the wind is not so bad, folks. Um, we find it beautiful and we find this to be the essential arrow color and color scheme when it comes to traditional archery. Many um, brands have tried to to copy this design in different colors. They would like bleach the turkey feathers um, and then recolor them in whatever color they use and then make them bared or um, striped again. And it looks better with some brands I feel and worse with some other ones. But these of course are the originals. Now, a little while ago and oh man, I hope this is not going to be too loud in the micro that I've got my dad cat on. Now a while ago there was a new development on the traditional modern trad archery sector. Um, trad veins came out. 
the holy grail of the modern trad archer who loves shooting over the shelf or use um, not a you know not a, a needle and a and a, and a and a button but still like a bear um, weather rest for example like I've shot it for a long time um, which allowed me with perfect form of course to shoot veins but yeah it's give or take on the 3d course of course here it doesn't really matter um, but I get to hunt sometimes in Canada when I when I stay there and canoe trip and stay until fall and you know then I don't want to be eh, when it comes to my arrow flight with um, veins because it's raining there or like the conditions you know might cause your arrows or your 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 um your fletching your traditional fletching your feathers to get wet and um recent tests have shown that wet feathers are the worst for your arrow flight that you can imagine and you just owe it to the animal and i think we agree on that to have perfect arrow flight or you, you do whatever you can with your equipment you're choosing traditional equipment or at least single string modern trad equipment and we all know that we can shoot our three inches at 20 yards so i've made sure that that is um working but now i have to make sure that my arrows are flying well so again i'm, I'm starting to to ramble here the trad veins hit the market and i'm not even don't know i don't even want to talk about um the different opinions about veins for single string traditional modern trad archery whatever you want to call it um, there's so many different opinions and I'm sure all of them have their reasons and all of them are valid What we can't argue about is that the, this is the holy grail as far as durability and having a completely weather resistant Setup that you can shoot over the shelf and I think multiple multiple um, personalities in the modern tread movement and have shown how accurate and how well these work so let's not talk about um, everybody's per personal preference. Let's just talk about the fact that these still look very much like veins. And this is probably one thing that all of us agree on is not necessarily super attractive. And we would love those to look barred or striped or whatever. But whenever I see attempts or whenever I've done attempts of doing this in the past, I have just come out with some tiger stripe looking ugly arrow or fletching and it was definitely pretty frustrating until recently when I decided that maybe the question as so often is not um, what I'm doing but how and why and so I got these old turkey feathers like I said the five and a half inch ones out and I cut them at three and a half inches and re redid the parabolic shape and I got to look at them and I realized that all the while I was doing hand painted bared feathers or veins I just did it completely wrong I was too much focused on the lines and the very straight lines to make it look somehow natural and pretty so I sat down with a couple of arrows that I had the tread veins on and they were 600s so I hardly shoot them at all 600 spines so I thought if I mess it up I just have a bunch of ugly 600s but it somehow ended up not looking too bad and um you be the judge but from a couple of yards away these in my opinion look at least to my eye a lot better than just tiger stripey um two perfect lines and i've done a couple different ones some with a with the cock feathers on a four fledge here two cock feathers that i don't need but i just wanted to have some contrast so looking at the traditional or like the natural barred feather we're realizing that the light colors are actually the smaller lines or the smaller surface right and the the dark surfaces are not perfect and not straight and they're not evenly spaced so you would you know rather than put them perfectly in a straight line 
you kind of want to get a little bit of a structure in there in order to um, get this not perfect but rather a little bit um, how would I say that um, a little bit of a toothed and a little bit of an uneven look this is a long tutorial talking a lot more than I was actually um, planning on but it's just how it is as soon as it comes to traditional archery a lot of us just love rambling so as you can imagine this is not really about what I'm using here this is really about how I'm doing it and why I'm doing it um, take a sharpie I know this is the biggest surprise of the entire video we are gonna be using a sharpie for this yeah a permanent marker sharpie um, whatever thickness you want but this is now the important part here um, when you start putting lines on this don't just put perfect zebra tiger stripes towards one direction on but rather put a surface on that is somehow going from left to right so a couple of lines are pointing out one side a couple of lines are pointing out the other side all right all right all right so what we're trying to achieve is this kind of look now if you look at it very closely it's obvious that there's of course some painting going on but what we're looking at is not the parts of the of the technique or like the, the lines we're looking for the pattern this is what you want to see a pattern all right so I'm gonna put these as it is on the feathers only on one side because the other side with these very light colored veins it's gonna shine through and if you're looking at the barred arrow here it's gonna be on a right wing or like on a right um, yeah right wing feather this is gonna be on the right side looking down the arrow and the left side is actually very light just one side has a very crisp pattern on it all right here we go right wing it's gonna be on the right side so I just gonna start by going down starting at the tip here and just very randomly put color on not going this way but rather going up and down the arrow like that so then I just gonna leave a centimeter or so gonna start down at the keel move forward a little bit and then maybe back just like that so it's not creating a perfectly crisp space in between but it's rather toothy so again moving backwards a little bit now I gotta move forward a little bit and then I gonna go back forward and then back and leave this weird space in between and another one here just going straight back at this getting a little bit narrow as I go back and then just a tip back here just a tad of color just back here to have this evenly spaced out now moving over to the exactly um, vis-a-vis -vis side I'm gonna do the same thing but not try to replicate what I just did just get a little bit creative with the width and the direction of my of my stripes another one here moving backwards and just a blob of color at the back here and I think if you're not looking too closely but you're just getting this impression from a little bit further away this looks a lot closer to your barred design than just putting tiger stripes on
Well, folks, thank you very much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you may be gonna enjoy shooting your tread veins a little bit more now that if you're looking at the quiver from a little bit further away. I think this looks a lot nicer and a lot better. So do your own experiments. Maybe there's something else that you can find out that works for you. Um, let me know what you think. If you're watching this video, um, chances are that we have a lot in common. At least the set of our, of our life. And I know that archers love nerding out and talk about stuff. So just leave a comment what you think. Whatever you're going to do. Enjoy. And I'm going to see you next time. Cheers.